Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our fourth Dust, Rust, and Rails tour. Um, last January, I, I went out with, with BART and we met with the Federal Transit Administration and we invited um, Administrator Rogoff out here to, to show all the needs that BART faces. And the advice was first go out and, and share this information with your elected officials and your local, um, local representatives, and then we'll come out. Well, that's exactly what we did. We've had three tours before today and over a hundred um, elected officials have participated on these tours thanks to the advice from Mr. Rogoff. We've had state senators, um, assembly members, members of Congress, and, and um, various advocates from different, um, people advocating for transit on dip for different levels. So we're, and we're very thrilled today to have Administrator Rogoff and, and Congresswoman Lee and, and a member of the Oakland, um, the, the Hayward City Council, Olden Henson, with us today. The point of, of today's event is that in order to preserve the transit system that we have, we must um, reinvest and prioritize a state of good repair um, by, in the nation. So BART is 40 years, about 40 years today, but for BART to be around for the next 40 years, we have to reinvest in the plant. There, there is a place for expansion, but there's also a place to keep this system that we have going in order for it to remain um, on time and reliable. So today we have um, various members of different representatives here. We had, um, unfortunately he had to leave, but he was here earlier today, Congressman Pete Stark. We have, we'll be speaking later, Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Um, we, uh, we have representatives from Congressman Jerry McNerney's office, Congressman George Miller, um, Mike Honda, State Senator Lonnie Hancock, and Supervisor um, Nadia Lockyard. So the first um, speaker today will be a member of the Hay Hayward City Council, a, a great friend and, and one of the original participants in this state in our Dust, Rust and Rails tour, um, Council Member Olden Hansen. Olden. Thank you, Director uh, Franklin. And uh, let me just say I'm honored to be in the presence of uh, Congresswoman Lee and Administrator Rogoff, thank you all, and welcome to Hayward this morning. Uh, also, there's another director, Director Rayburn is here as well. Um, once again, this is my second uh, uh, tour down here, and each time I am more impressed with the ability of the employees to make old technology work and keep us safe and running out there every day. So let me thank you all for all of your tremendous efforts. I'm also honored to be a part of a, a county that is truly a self-help county. Alameda County is a self-help county. As a member of not only the Hayward City Council, but also the Alameda County Transportation Commission, I can truly tell you that that is the case. Uh, as a part of a process of helping ourselves in 1986, we put before the voters a measure, Measure B that would create funds for transportation projects throughout the county. The voters passed it overwhelmingly, and we've been able to sustain since then. And as a part, again, of the Alameda County Transportation, we've endeavored to tackle that once again, recognizing that funding has been dwindling. So we're going to the voters in November of this year to ask them for an additional one-half cent increase in sales tax to create an additional $100 million in transportation-related projects in Alameda County. We need those funds. We know what is happening statewide. We know what is happening at the federal level. So we are attempting to help ourselves. In late 2010, we went to the voters with a measure, Measure F, which was a vehicle registration fee. It created an additional uh, $10 onto vehicle registration uh, tabs. The voters passed that for us. That created $10 million, at the, uh, upwards of $10 million for local streets and road projects. So our voters have been very generous to us as we attempt to address uh, transportation related projects. But the measure B and the extension of the countywide transportation plan, which will go on the ballot in uh, November this year, will create once again to additional funds for transportation related projects, including uh, funding for the BART to Livermore uh, project, which will remove as many as 20,000 cars uh, from the uh, 580 corridor. 
and help us reduce our greenhouse gases, which is an objective of our congressional delegation as well as our state. It also creates funding for technology. It also creates money for BART. Uh, it creates money for freight and goods movement. And it allows us to link transportation uh, to land use uh, issues as well. So I am indeed proud of what we're doing. We are a self-help county, but Administrator Rogoff, we need your help. We really do need your help. You, what you've seen today is, is, is not only a plea, but it's a show that we really do need your help. And so we're asking for your assistance in this, and Congresswoman Lee, our delegation, our congressional delegation of Bay Area is the best in the country, uh, bar none. So I know that we have the greatest advocates there. So once again, welcome to Hayward, everybody, and thank you, and uh, I thank the administrator and the congresswoman for being here today. So it is, it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, the Administrator of the Federal Transit Administration, Peter Rogoff. Um, since his arrival three years ago, Mr. Rogoff has boosted funding for transit through unprecedented initiatives like the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. He also has spent 14 years as, as the Democratic Staff Director for the Transportation Subcommittee, which has demonstrated his commitment to public transit. And, and on a personal note, Administrator Rogoff has played a pivotal role in changing the culture here at BART. Um, prior to 2009, quite frankly, Title VI was a check a checkbox that we had to go through on our, when we uh, reviewed policy. But because of um, Administrator Rogoff, we take it seriously in just about every decision, every board meeting, uh, we, we look at Title VI um, implications and how, it, how all, all of our decisions impacts everyone. And because of that, we are making better decisions because, because of that um, initiative. So I personally have to thank, once again publicly, Administrator Rogoff for leading the way. Um, so please give a warm welcome to our friend and Federal Transit Administrator, Peter Rogoff. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's important to remember that the year that BART opened its doors was the same year that Richard Nixon made his historic trip to China. And at that time, the price of gasoline was 36 cents a gallon. Uh, I'm here in the Bay Area uh, for many things. This one is perhaps the most important. Tomorrow, we are going to break ground on an extension of BART down to San Jose. And the Federal Transit Administration, as part of that project, is committing some $900 million to a $2.3 billion expansion of BART. But what this facility shows us, and what the conditions that BART riders are experiencing every day show us, is that it's not enough just to invest in a systems expansion. What is absolutely critical is that we reinvest in its ongoing needs. President Obama has articulated a policy to deal with higher gas prices. It's an all of the above policy. It includes, ex it includes expanded oil and gas exploration. It includes investment in wind and solar power. It also includes investment in seeing to it that transit is a real option for more Americans. That's what Bart to San Jose is going to do. But in order for transit to be a real meaningful option for people to avoid the pain at the gas pump, that service needs to be reliable and desirable. Absent reinvesting in systems like BART, in the major maintenance, the replacement of rail cars that are now the oldest rail cars running in the United States, if we don't replace those rail cars, transit will no longer be a meaningful and real option to avoiding the pain at the gas pump. Every year since the Obama administration has, has taken office, the transit budgets we have put forward to Congress have highlighted investments in state of good repair of our systems as the highest budget priority. They are not always the sexiest investments, but they are the investments that absolutely have to be made in order 
for rail transit and bus transit to remain a reliable and desirable option. We currently have an estimated backlog of some $80 billion nationwide uh, in terms of major maintenance that needs to get done in order to maintain conditions of our uh, existing transit services. Th those amounts exceed $4.4 billion right here in the Bay Area. That's not just BART, it's very critical reinvestments that need to be made in Muni, Caltrain, Samtrans, all the other providers in this area. But again, if we don't make those necessary reinvestments in these systems, we're going to lose ridership rather than gain it. And at a time of $4 gasoline, we need to be talking about growing ridership and giving more families the opportunity to avoid that pain at the gas pump. Let me just say also that um, it's absolutely critical that Congress move forward, as Barbara Lee knows and Pete Stark knows, it's absolutely critical that Congress moves forward on a multi-year transportation authorization bill that will give agencies like BART, like Muni, like the other transit providers in the area, the certainty of knowing that federal funds are on the way. President Obama has articulated a plan to fund a well-funded, multi-year transportation investment bill that would take half the savings that we'll enjoy from bringing our troops back from Iraq and Afghanistan and reinvesting those dollars back in American infrastructure for highways and transit. It's absolutely essential that Congress moves forward with this course and not continue to kick the can down the road through short-term extensions. Congresswoman Lee, Pete Stark, others like them know this well. We need to reinvest here in America. We need to try and claw back every manufacturing job that we've lost. And we've been successful in that over the last few years, especially in areas like transit. But in order for us to make real progress, in order for us to make sure that we're going to have the dollars to re replace BART's rail cars, make the necessary investments so that BART and all the other transit providers are providing reliable and desirable service, we need a multi-year transportation bill coming out of Congress this year. And we look forward to the leadership of people like Barbara Lee in helping make that happen. So thanks very much. Um, our, our next speakers will be Congressman, um, Congresswoman Barbara Lee. I saw um, Congresswoman Lee speak yesterday at an AC Transit event. And today she's here at BART, so it shows her commitment, among other things, to public transit, and, and it's great to see. Great to see. Um, last week, um, Congresswoman Lee tweeted uh, about a, a cancer patient who, um, who is, is, is a Bay Area advocate, um, and, he, and, and, and how it impacts the nation's health care uh, policies. And this, um, this person that, sh that she referenced is a personal friend and also a former BART employee, Kenya Wheeler. And I think this, this tweet uh, spawned a new phrase that Barbara Lee tweets for me. So bef be before it's, it's, it, it has been Barbara Lee speaks for me and now it, Barbara Lee also tweets for me. So it's, I, I, it's hard to keep continuing to introduce a speaker that will speak for, for us. So please welcome our friend, Barbara, Congresswoman Barbara Lee. much for that very spirited introduction, but thank you so much, uh, yourself and Alden, for your leadership, tremendous leadership. Also, I just have to thank our regional administrator, Rogers, for really uh, just managing a wonderful region, but also for being always available to help us in terms of our constituent needs and giving us input and insight into what we need to know, so thank you again. Also, I have to take a minute to uh, thank Jim Copeland here from Washington, D.C. He and his team do a phenomenal job keeping us on point. And this Bay Area delegation, yes, it is the most phenomenal delegation uh, as it relates to public transportation, BART, AC Transit. And Jim and his team really, you know, in spite of all of our priorities, make sure that this remains a priority for us. And also to our general manager and all of the directors, to Roderick and to all of you uh, who work here at BART, let me thank you so much. Because I have to reiterate um, you know, what was said earlier in terms of your creativity and ingenuity and how you have been able to really maintain this 40-year-old this system. 
I uh, remember very well, I was a student at Mills College and my kids were four and five years old when we first started riding BART. <laughs> and they're 45 and 46 now. And so it's a system that uh, has done unbelievable, uh, it set the standard, I think, in an unbelievable way as a national model. But yes, we must invest in not only maintenance, but in terms of uh, making sure that we have the new technology and the equipment and the new trains to continue uh, as for BART to continue to be a national model. To Administrator Rogoff, let me just thank you so much for being here and for your unbelievable commitment and leadership to public transportation, especially BART. You know, uh, we went through quite a struggle with the BART connector, but this Adm Administrator Rogoff, he hung in there. You could have walked away and he didn't. We had late, late night phone calls and all kinds of negotiations took place. And he really saw what needed to happen, but he also knew the importance of Title VI and all of the other environmental issues and everything had to be right for him to sign off of it. So I just have to thank you very much for that. Every time I drive up uh, Hagenberger, you know, I'm very proud of, of what took place because of all of you. So thank you again, Administrator, and thank you for being here today. Finally, let me just um, close by saying uh, how important what the administrator said about the transportation bill, a long-term transportation bill is. And I have to just thank Senator Boxer because she did a phenomenal job in the Senate negotiating what we thought was the best possible bill given the political realities, and you know what I'm talking about, of what we're dealing with in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, when it got back to the House, you know what happened. And so we've got to go back to the drawing board. But systems such as BART, regional systems, state of good repair, um, transit-minded lawmakers, I'm confident that we're going to figure out how to make sure we get the long-term transportation bill that, that you deserve and that this country and this community deserves. So thank you again so much for inviting me to be with you today. That was a very good suggestion, Administrator Rogoff, to have elected officials come look at the maintenance centers, you know, of BART because we, this is my first visit here and I, I just want to tell you how, first of all, impressed I am of what takes place here and what the work, what goes into maintaining this, this safe system, but it's also very clear to me that we need upgrades and modern equipment and modern technology and we never would have seen this had we not been here today. We would have, Jim would have told us that and we would have read about it, but now we have a chance to really see it and understand it very clearly. So thank you again. Thank you all. Um, so our next speaker is a, our newest member to the BART Board of Directors, Robert Rayburn, and he's our, our local Energizer Bunny. Just nonstop energy, and he's really brought a new enthusiasm to BART and, and a dedication to focus on uh, the state of good repair as well as the vibrancy of, BART, of the areas around uh, the BART station. So it'll be exciting to watch Director Rayburn grow, and, and please give a warm welcome to Robert Rayburn, Director Robert Rayburn. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. I appreciate that we have Director Rogoff, that we have our Congressman Lee here with us today. I represent part of the core area in Oakland where all six of the stations that are in my district are 40 years old. The passengers in the, at those stations ask for, why aren't the cars longer? Why can't we put more cars out on the rails every morning during the peak hour commute? Why are the periods between trains so long? The short answer is we don't have enough equipment. I want to acknowledge the people in this room that are working on these cars. These are the heroes that keep our system afloat. Our 669 vehicles Almost 90% of those are out on the road every day, every morning. And we need more of those cars. We need to keep pressing this group to keep those cars operating. I want to share a short anecdote that last year when I first met Tamar Allen, and she told me about the strategic maintenance program here. I learned that we have a new policy where we're not just running our cars until they fail, that we want to run them all through a program first to make sure that they're ready 
to provide reliable service. And so I asked her, Tamar, within a year, will your strategic maintenance program allow us to return to a 15-minute headway so our passengers won't stand on the platform waiting longer than 15 minutes? She said, give me a year. I'll let you know. Well, I asked her again this year. And she said, I'm sorry, Director, but we're not ready yet to return to that level of service. We need those new cars. We're going to be pushing ever harder to make this shop work day and night, along with our four, three other shops, to keep those cars on the road. A bit of optimism is that in the core area, we are experiencing record ridership on a daily basis right now. The throngs are knocking at the door. We are seeing a new generation that wants to ride, that they are becoming transit dependent. You've read about a story recently that more and more students coming out of high school and college, they're issuing the driver's license. They want to be our passengers. We don't have the capacity right now to deliver. And so I'm going to be setting our priorities as state of good repair and get this new fleet of cars so that we can provide for the needs where people have already said, I'm hooked, I want to take transit. Thank you. Thank you, Director Rayburn. And our, our last speaker will be our general manager, Grace Kernigan. BART is, has been 95% on time. We have a operating ratio of 72%, which means that 72% of, of our operating budget is, comes from our passengers and other fares and other fees. Um, so we, we are, we're doing very well as an agency. And yet we have a new general manager who has brought fresh air to this organization, a breath of fresh air to this organization. She's re-examined the, the need to make this an even safer system, an even more accessible system. It's been a great pleasure to see um, Grace be, take, take over and take charge of this organization and lead us into a, a new direction. Please welcome uh, our new general manager, Grace Krennigan. Thank you, Bob. I thought when you were starting with the on-time thing, you were going to say something about me being late or something, and I was, hopefully I wasn't. But uh, the first thing I want to do is thank Peter Rogoff, his leadership, the leadership of Secretary Ray LaHood and President Obama for standing behind transit and the role that it plays in people's lives and in the economy of this country. There are other people that would have buckled and in these tough budget times not made the stand that they have for improving the infrastructure of this country and making the connection to everybody's daily life. And they have done a marvelous job showing the leadership here and I want you to give them a round of applause because they've done a hell of a job. Thank you, Peter. second thing I want to tell you is our customers, when they fill out customer survey cards, and we're talking to them all the time, the number one thing they mention is reliability. They ride BART because they know it's going to be there and they know it's going to take them to their destination. What you saw here was a state of good repair. It's the work of the workers at BART and the management at BART doing the best they can to take the budget they have and make those cars deliver the services that our customers expect of us. Now what we have is about a 600 plus million dollar operating budget and of that 45 million comes from the federal government and when Peter and Secretary LaHood and the President stand up for transit, they're standing up for 45 million of that 600 million dollar budget every year that we count on so it's very critical. Our members of Congress, the delegation from the Bay Area uh, represented here today uh, by Congressman Pete Stark and uh, 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 Barbara Lee have been stood by us and stood by the administration in trying to bring these dollars home. And this congressional delegation has done an outstanding job working in partnership uh, with the administration. And that's very critical to our success here. Now, as we move on and we're trying to continue to provide that speed and reliability, these cars can't last forever. And I tell you, this crew that's here today has done a great job of stringing these things together and finding new ways to keep them going. And, and Congressman Lee mentioned the creativity that's been done. But what we have to do is we have to buy some new cars. We have the oldest fleet in the nation, which is what Peter t talked about, and that oldest fleet has to be replaced. So we are bringing to the BART board in the next couple of months a proposal to replace those cars. We've gone through the process. And in that process, we, we actually 
took a step back just for a minute in order to take advantage of some legislation that was passed by the delegation here in California and signed by the, the governor uh, to allow us to increase our Buy America provisions. So what we did is reconstruct our bidding process to allow that Buy America piece to come in and have it go up. At the federal level, 60% needs to be Buy America, but, but due to the good work of the con uh, uh, assembly here and the governor, we we're able to add and increment and provide some rewards for doing more. So we won't be able to make those announcements until we've gone through all of our, all the process that we have to go through in order to validate the work um, of the uh, bids and the work we've done. But we do believe that our top two bidders actually were very much incentivized by that legislation. So as we go through that Buy America provision, it's very important to us that we buy here locally. The last thing I want to say is that uh, the team that you see before you here today is a team at the state level, it's a team at the federal level of both the administration, the Congress, and BART, and it really takes everybody, our union members, our management team, to work together to deliver the service that the customers expect, and I really want to applaud everyone for taking the time to come out and kind of look at our undercarriage here and what it takes to actually run the system, because it's not a pretty site, but it's a really solid site, and I really want to thank all of you that are partners here today. So thank you very much. This concludes our conference. Thank you.